This is lesson nine of my Healthy Cooking Time Saver series. You are almost finished, but we still have to talk about the most important meal of the day. And that, of course, is breakfast. Breakfast gives you natural energy, jumpstarts your metabolism, and curbs overeating later in the day. Despite all of these reasons, too many people skip breakfast. And here's why. Either they're nauseous in the mornings, or they're running out the door. Let's talk about the first issue, nausea. Your digestive system slows down at night, so if you wake up and have a big meal, that can make you feel sick. Also, if you eat late at night, right before bed, your body hasn't had enough time to digest, and that can also result in nausea in the morning. There are a few ways to curb nausea. The first thing you can try is eating dinner at 5 or 6 p.m. and then not eating the rest of the night. The second thing you can try is to eat a lighter breakfast, so avoid any foods with grease or dairy in it. One of the best methods to adjusting your body to breakfast is to eat breakfast 15 minutes earlier each day. So if you normally first eat at 11 a.m., tomorrow try eating at 10.45. And if you continue this pattern for a week, you will be eating by 9.30. If one of those days you feel nauseous, then continue at that same time the following days until it goes away. You will be surprised at how quickly your body adjusts to new patterns. The second reason why people don't eat breakfast is because of time. Everyone is capable of eating breakfast because it simply takes waking up five minutes earlier. But sometimes when we do that, that time becomes devoted to other morning rituals. I used to eat breakfast at the end of my morning routine, but what I found was instead of eating breakfast, I was spending that time on other activities. Now I eat breakfast right when I wake up. It took my body a little bit of adjusting to this because I would feel nauseous at first, but after a week, I was completely readjusted. It takes dedication to wake up five minutes earlier every day. If you're not prepared to do this, there are foods you can make ahead of time for on-the-go eating. Whether you eat on the go or at home, you want to make sure your breakfast is full of fiber and protein. This will keep you satisfied for much longer than if you eat something like sugary cereal. So I'm going to demonstrate a few of my favorite breakfast recipes. The first recipe I'm demonstrating is a hard-boiled egg pita packet. It's perfect for individuals with very busy weekday schedules because you can hard boil all your eggs on Sunday to last you through Friday. Making hard boiled eggs is really easy. Simply take your eggs, cover it with one to two inches of water in a pot, and then put it on the stove, cover the pot, and turn it on high until it boils. Once your pot of water boils, then you're going to turn it completely off and let it stand for about 10 minutes. You can adjust the stand time depending on how well cooked you like your eggs. When your eggs are finished cooking, lightly crack the top and the bottom to relieve pressure, then store them in the refrigerator. This helps when it comes to peeling the eggs. It also helps to use older eggs. You can assemble your pita pocket at home or at work. All you have to do is grab a whole wheat pita pocket, your hard boiled egg, maybe a slice of cheese or a tomato, and you have a protein and fiber filled breakfast. This second recipe can also be made on Sunday for the rest of the week, but this one can be enjoyed by those who are allergic to eggs and or gluten. This recipe is steel cut oatmeal, but when you prepare it my way, you don't have to spend time cooking it. To start with, you always want to buy steel cut oats because that is a whole grain versus the rolled or instant oats that you find most commonly in the grocery stores. Pour the oats into a fine mesh strainer and then rinse them to get rid of excess starch. You'll find that the water will turn from cloudy to clear. Once the oats are rinsed, you can then spoon it into a jar or a plastic container. Now you have your rinsed oatmeal in a jar and you're simply going to cover it with almond milk or dairy milk or even water, but I like to use almond milk. And you cover it just until all of the groats are covered. Then you simply screw on the lid, stick it in the refrigerator, and let it sit overnight. 
By the morning, the groats become soft enough to eat. You can take this and put it in the microwave or eat it cold. When stored in the refrigerator, your jars will last you the whole week. I like to add bananas, cinnamon, honey, and nuts to my oatmeal. But feel free to experiment. You can use stevia to sweeten it as well, or even maple syrup. You'll notice that in the nutrition label of your steel-cut oats, one serving size contains 7 grams of protein. But be aware that this is only a partial protein. Combine it with peanut butter or a dairy product, and then it becomes a whole protein. This last dish is a veggie breakfast skillet. You can also make this one up ahead of time, but I like to eat mine hot. And it only takes a few minutes to make. The first step is to heat coconut oil in a skillet. While that's heating, go ahead and chop your vegetables. So you can use a variety of vegetables. My favorite is onion, mushroom, and kale. To save time, I'll chop all my ingredients one day a week and then store them in airtight containers in the refrigerator. That way, when I go to make this dish, I don't have to do any chopping. I just grab the containers sprinkle a little bit into the skillet, and I'm ready to go. If you've never worked with whole kale, this is what it looks like. You want to wash it and then remove this tough center stalk. I simply remove it by peeling the leaves off. This gets discarded and the leaves go in the skillet. I've added my three ingredients and I give it a quick stir, I crack an egg, and the egg adds protein, which helps you also feel satisfied. You can add cheese as well. Cover it with a lid. Monitor the heat on medium-low and let it sit. You may cook your veggie skillet until the yolks are completely set or they're still runny. I like to leave my yolks runny. So remove it once it's cooked. And you have yourself a quick three-minute breakfast. Mmm, I love this dish. The kale is full of fiber and calcium. It gives a nice crunch to it, but if you don't like the crunch, you can also substitute spinach, which also has a lot of iron. If you aren't already eating breakfast, your homework for tomorrow is to eat just a little bit earlier in the day. If you already do enjoy breakfast, try out one of these dishes.